If you imagine an ordinary moment at an intersection in New York City, and there's a pause, because there's a street light, and some people are stopped and others are in motion. Some cars are stopped and others are in motion. If you were to put that in a film terms, in a freeze frame, and hold everything for a second, you would realize that there's a universe there of totally disparate intentions. Everybody going about his or her business in the silence of their own minds with everybody else and the street and the time of day and the architecture and the quality of the light and the nature of the weather as kind of background or field for the individual consciousness and the drama it is making of itself at that moment. When you think about that, that's what happens in a city. And that somehow the city can embrace and um, accept and accommodate all that disparate intention at one and the same time, not only in that corner, but in thousands of corners. On September 2nd, 1609, an English explorer hired by the Dutch to find a faster route to the riches of the Orient steered his 80-ton ship off the surging currents of the North Atlantic and into an immense sheltered bay. Sailing to the mouth of the mile-wide river that flowed into it from the north, he pushed 100 miles upstream, hoping it led to China. It didn't. But though he had failed to find the Northwest Passage, Henry Hudson had stumbled upon something even better, one of the biggest and best natural harbors in the world. A safe haven, one fellow explorer said, wherein a thousand ships may ride in safety. Of all the early explorers, Hudson was the first to sense the immense potential of the remote and lonely harbor. Yet even he could never have foreseen the tremendous human forces it would one day unleash. Nor that the great city that would rise there would be dedicated to a crucial experiment, one that would grow ever more urgent with each passing year. The exhilarating, often harrowing experiment to see whether all the peoples of the world could live together in a single place. city was founded by the Dutch. The Dutch didn't give a damn about anything except making money. And the more money you made, the closer you were to God. And they would build some churches to, to thank him for his, for his generously setting things up for them. Unlike Boston or Philadelphia or many other places in the United States, New York was not founded by visionaries anxious to create a new place to practice their own version of religious freedom. The Dutch came to New York City and established a trading post there to make a buck or to make a gilder. And that acquisitiveness, that materialism, that search for the success has dominated New York and characterized New York ever since the white person first set foot on this land. And even today, there's an energy in New York. There's a bustle in New York. And that bustle has been there for more than 350 years. Because of its shape, the narrowness, the way the neighborhoods are all pushed together, 
you're constantly being forced to, whether you want to or not, watch other people with wildly radical styles. That's what a New Yorker in some way commits to, that constant life of transition, the constant possibility of change. You can come here and reinvent yourself, or you can be born here and reinvent yourself. And, um, uh, and you can change yourself. And if you can change yourself, presumably in the process, you are also changing the whole structure of the world that you operate in in order to make your new fictive reality come alive. It was always the place of greatest opportunity. It was not the West. The West was the place of greatest opportunity if you were gonna be a rancher, you know, but say you weren't. You have people from all over the world. You have more languages spoken in New York City than any city in the world. You have every national group, racial group, religious group represented here. And what they're competing to do is to really create a better life for themselves. New York is, is continuously throwing up new ideas and new people. This turns out to be the setting in which political democracy becomes possible as in no other. It is exactly that money-crazy, driving commercial culture that made political democracy seem perfectly sensible, perfectly normal, and indeed brought it into existence such that a popular democracy was established for the first time and many of the people governed. One of the reasons that this place is endlessly in flux and it's endlessly recomposed is because it is, in fact, a capitalist city. It is a place where capitalism has, has been allowed to work itself out with the least kind of impediments, for good and for ill. And the good is that it produces incredible, dazzling things, but the downside of it is uh, that you get what you pay for. When most Americans think of, think of history, they don't think of New York, they think of Williamsburg or Philadelphia or Boston. And yet New York is really the most historic of American cities and really in a number of ways. It's first of all older than all those other places, started in 1624 by the Dutch, but it's also unusual in other ways. More has happened in New York than in Boston or Philadelphia or certainly Colonial Williamsburg. I mean, the litany of important events that took place on the tiny island of Manhattan would be far beyond really any other similarly sized plot in the United States. And thirdly, people don't realize it, is that New York is old as a big city. And by the end of the 19th century, New York was the fastest growing city in the world. So New York encountered historically many problems which we associate with cities long before places like Athens or Istanbul or Beijing or half a hundred other places that technically are older than New York. New York is unlike any other place in the United States. We've tested everything first. We've tested immigration. We've tested unionization. We've tested industrialization. All the great experiments of American society have probably occurred here first the rapid urban expansion, this experiment in multiracial, multicultural society came here first. When New York was founded at the dawn of the modern age, London and Paris were already 1,500 years old. Rome and Beijing, 2,000. Jerusalem, 4,000. And yet, somehow, in the centuries to come, the tiny colony on the edge of the world would rise to become the greatest city on Earth, the undisputed cultural and economic capital of the world, and the supreme laboratory of modern life. The old saw that whatever happens in New York happens in the rest of the country 10 years later uh, is, has, has certainly been true for the life of our country. If American society is going to succeed, it is going to have to find a way to do what New York has always done, which is to take incredibly disparate human elements, put them together, and find a way for them to tolerate each other. So the fate of New York is extremely important to the fate of the country. <laughs>